understanding to understanding and newfound love. Uh, and the central performance is he he has exceptional power expressing a tremendous range of emotion during the film. From the very beginning, we see Thomas clutching that telephone receiver. We come right into the film and he's on the he's, he's trying to get to his father. He's hanging on as if he's hanging on to a life raft with the camera positioned at his height and close to his face, framing the adults around him as half obscured torsos. We don't really see them. When you, if you go back and look at these scenes, they're wonderful to look at in terms of filmmaking. Uh, they're half obscured. Uh, their, their voices are disembodied. We don't know who's speaking. And despite uh, the recordings on the phone, he keeps reaching uh, and the explanations that the grown-ups keep repeating, Cyril rejects the idea that his father's left him behind. Instead, he embarks on this single-minded search for the vanished parent and for his beloved bike, his beloved bike, breaking out of the orphanage, running in and out of corridors and climbing trees and fences. He's like a, a little feral creature whose nonstop motion barely conceals the fact that he's running in circles, uh, propelled by sheer anger and confusion. It's fitting that the film's first turning point arrives in that moment of abrupt stasis uh, as this runaway boy finds himself desperately hugging Samantha in the doctor's office. Uh, I mean, and the way the way it's filmed, uh, the relationship between Cyril and Samantha brings to mind one of the laws of motion. A body in motion travels in a straight path until acted on by an outside force. And Samantha is the outside force. Uh, and uh, that scene is beautifully done because if you look at it closely and you think about it, it is almost like a reverse pieta, the way that she's holding him and he's holding her uh, in that moment. And I will tell you the Dardens use a tremendous amount of symbolism uh, in their films. There is a layer. Uh, their, their films are in some ways allegorical which explains the titles, the simple titles, The Promise, The Kid with a Bike. It's almost told like an allegory. Uh, anyway, uh, she is the force that stops Cyril with that embrace. Uh, and it is it is a, a beatific gesture. Uh, as the Dardens explained it, it is an almost reverse pieta. Samantha is portrayed as both a no-nonsense woman accustomed to a rough world, as we see, and also perhaps a bit celestial. You can hold on to me, she calmly says, while counselors struggle to pry what looks like this little statue apart. But don't hold on so tight, but not so tight. I love that, but not so tight. She, it's as if she's saying, you can trust me. You can trust me. She is a mix of hard-boiled guardian and glowing fairy godmother in this film. When it comes to Samantha's decision to take him and later to accept him, they don't explain. There's no explanation in this film. There's no judgment. They show instead of serving up psychological banalities, did she have a bad childhood? There's no backstory. Did she have a bad childhood? Did she lose a child? They dramatize pivotal moments. Quietly, they're astonishing, in which people make decisions, often impulsively, the way humans do, that change the course of people's lives, in this case. Uh, as she makes a choice, she reveals so much about how she got to this place in life. Uh, when, when Cyril says to her, why did you let me come here? And she says, I don't know. She makes a choice. We sense that she knows very well. But she says, I don't know. I can't put my finger on it. And yet he seemingly, his seeming obstinacy is also a manifestation of faith in a weird way. He feverishly believes in his father, believes that they will be reunited and that Guy would never have sold Cyril's beloved bicycle. Remember, my father would never do that. I mean, he just, he has this unwavering faith uh, in his father. And then there's the fairy tale notion of the film that's furthered with Wes, with Wes. An appropriate name for a teenage rebel who possesses the worst of Western opportunism, 
and capitalism gone wrong in this case. But he is, he, he calls himself West like he's a cowboy. Uh, we have a Western trope in the film, in this character. Uh, but it's, it's, he's actually like a sly fox or perhaps a devil who with his band of lost boys seduces him into becoming a trickster like Pinocchio. He is like a little Pinocchio under Wes's supervision. And once he tracks down his dad, he turns out to be a deadbeat, learning the truth as a result of his crime. Once again, the fairy tale notion puts Thomas into a forest that could ultimately bring his downfall. When he finally commits the crime, he's once again, you know, it's that little forest where things happen, where he gets accepted first. Uh, he has the fight with the young boy and then later on the ultimate showdown uh, with the son. And as he rises up at that moment, uh, a little Lazarus after the fall, you know, did he die? What happened? He, he just gets up. He finally rides towards something rather than away from it. At the ending, you know, it's a simple ending. He's riding towards something now. He's not going after his father. He's riding towards Samantha. He's riding towards what he thinks now is a home. If the kid with a bike is a fairy tale, it's the unsentimental kind that locates this dark enchantment and characters discovering themselves during their most despairing moments. Uh, the film displays a heartening airiness that purifies any hint of uh, portentousness. It brightens their vision without diluting it. The dark dens build steadily toward an ending that, while seemingly a, seemingly a happy one because he survives, he's come through, it squeezes the heart out of its view of the sudden acts of revenge and compassion that make or break people. And as in their best work, lift rough hewn realism into the realm of cinematic transcendence, giving us a film about the possibilities of kindness, that kindness can work uh, and it works in this film. While they do delve into religious allegory, ultimately there is resurrection, but they create a fable. As I said, it's almost a fairy tale that's a philosophical, it's philosophical in many ways, and aesthetic, that once again asks that important question, what does it mean to be human? They're always seeking the answer to that question if there is one. What does it mean to be human? And all their characters are nothing less than human in good and bad ways. The cinematography, uh, which is the same in all their films, takes us into their world. In fact, critics, critics have often said, welcome to the Dardenne planet, uh, the planet Dardenne. It's as if they've created their own realm of film uh, in a post-industrial town. Sarang is a post-industrial town. And uh, in this particular film, it's summer. It's a little brighter, a little leafier. Uh, the music, uh, which is uncharacteristic for them, they never really use music in their film, uh, offers these, as I said, these flourishes of Beethoven's Emperor Concerto. Uh, you know, there are so many little scenes that, that of hope or scenes of danger uh, when, and scenes of choice. What I said, when, when they're in the car, uh, with Samantha's boyfriend, and he he actually goes in the totally wrong direction. You never ask somebody, is it him or me? Is it him or me? And that's what he does. That's what he does. And Samantha just looks at him, doesn't even think twice, and says, Thomas, picks Thomas. Uh, you know, and, and uh, he walks away you know, like the typical ass he is. Uh, anyway, we have that moment. We have, you know, and she she really gives, he really gives Samantha a hard time at the beginning. Uh, and, and she just bears up. Uh, she tries her best. She does not want to fail. She does not want to fail. Um, and and uh, his father, you know, when he goes to see Guy, you know, Guy, 
at one point welcomes him into the rest, takes him into the restaurant. But then he tells him, I can't do anything for you. I can't do anything for you. He doesn't want, you know, what we see here measured is some people should be parents. Uh, those Sometimes those with kids shouldn't be parents. And sometimes those who don't have children make the best parents uh, in this case. Um, we, we get to see these things. Uh, young Thomas Dorrit, uh, his, his name, who plays, who plays uh, Cyril, uh, he, he fills this role with a naturalness and a focus. Uh, not a second of his performance seems contrived. It's all natural. It's all natural. All the scenes on his bike, he moves with the freedom uh, the boy is denied elsewhere. That's where he truly feels free riding that bike. Otherwise, he's seduced by Wes. He feels constrained in the orphanage. Uh, he's rejected by his father. Uh, his wheels are his only friends and an extension of his will. His, it's, it's as if his, they are his legs, these wheels. He is all there to be seen. His need, his abandonment, his reckless determination, his unprotected youth. It's all out there. It's all out there for us to watch. He's in constant motion throughout the film, a tough, he's a tough, but he's a tender kid who won't take no for an answer. Uh, he's all there, as I said, uh, totally unprotected. And then uh, the actress Cecile de France, uh, I don't know how many of you would recognize her. She is seen in a lot of French film. Uh, also international films, a wonderful actress. Uh, this uh, was this film was one of the first. She was one of the first major stars to appear in a Darden film. They never used a recognized actor in their films before this. Uh, they always worked with with raw talent, uh, with actors who maybe played featured roles in films. They didn't have starring roles. And she is the first. Uh, and, and a few years later, uh, in the film, uh, Two Days, One Night, Marion Cotillard uh, starred in one of their films. The first time that they used such a high-level actress. Uh, and uh, Jeremy Renier I spoke about. Uh, there is another actor in their films who should be recognizable. Maybe not, but maybe now you will. His name is Olivier Gourmet. And uh, he played a small role in this film as a bartender. If you remember when Cyril wanders in and there is a bartender, uh, he's played a cop in their films and he starred in one of their films, for which he was nominated for many awards. It is entitled The Sun. He plays a, a shop teacher. Uh, and the, the plot is a very simple one. He plays a father shop teacher who almost kills the boy who killed his son, who killed his son. It is a very, very tense, wonderfully done film. Uh, the father, the other father in the film, the one who uh, Cyril beats over the head, his name is Fabrizio Rangon, and he is also a very popular actor now in, in uh, France and Belgium, uh, and he's had small roles in the Dardenne films. But this film takes a big nod the neorealism and French new wave in that it uses real people. Uh, Cyril never, the, the Thomas Dora who plays Cyril never acted before. Wes, uh, the devil never acted before. And they all were very natural in their roles. Uh, you know, and as I said, you know, you never know what somebody's going to do. There's good and bad. There sometimes is good in somebody who's told, we think is totally bad. Look at Wes and the way he's treating his grandmother. Uh, you know, it's, it's, yes, it's his meal ticket, but he, he has a responsibility. Uh, he, uh, you know, and he comes off as caring about Cyril, but he is the devil in, in sheep's clothing uh, in this film. Uh, and, and uh, you know, the Dardens make references, again, to neorealistic films. There is a reference to uh, Vittorio De Sica's Bicycle Thieves in the sense of a missing bike and what a missing bike represents. In this one, it represents to a child his freedom, 
You know, in the bicycle thieves, it represented a man's dignity, a man's ability to work. Here, it represents a child's freedom, uh, also a child's love, uh, a connection, if you will. Uh, you know, when when uh, she buys the bicycle for him at the beginning, or brings him the bicycle, and it says, "But you manages to find it." Uh, that is an, a, a true act, not just of kindness, but of connection. You know, there's something we can only guess at what makes her feel this way. And there's no wrong answer. There's no right answer because we don't know the story behind her. Uh, we only know a little, we can only surmise a little bit. Uh, but it is, what's important is what's happening in the moment in the film and the decisions the characters make. It is a film of immediacy. It's not a film that has to be explained in the past tense, uh, which is wonderful. Uh, so, uh, and, and I am sure you can pick out your favorite moments in the film, your feelings about the film, and that's what I wanna hear now, is, is move into that uh, zone where we will have a discussion. So, uh, and I hope some of you have some Interesting. Well, I'm sure you all have interesting things to say. So I am waiting to see uh, hands go up. And any moment now, somebody's hand is going to go up or I played a circle game. Uh, so who's going to go first? Ah, Ann Kirshner. Go ahead. Jump right in there. What happened to her? They, you got to unmute. Okay. You rattled you off go. so many names of films that you recommended, and I didn't catch them all. So can you slowly mention four that we might want to watch? I'm going to put them into the chat. How's that? Okay, so everybody good. can That'd see that. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> uh, I will put them in. Okay. He's up there. Okay. Good job. Okay. Ah. There you go. There it is. Okay. Okay. There you go. Oh, wonderful. Um, Thank you very much. You're welcome. Okay, Dora, it's your turn. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Um, the film okay. was something very hard, which is the rejection from the father. So uh, probably they want they want to make the the people watching the film to feel something that it's very hard because it's very I thought it was how how can that be that a father is going to reject the son that the way he did? I mean and, and even didn't leave him the bicycle, you know, that, that he loved so much. So, and, and the, the kid, uh, Cyril, he, he was amazing. He was such a great actor. Uh, you said that he's not a professional. That Well, he wasn't until this, this moment. <laughs> yes, but, but he's so, I mean, he's great with the bicycle and all the emotions that he shows, he's really, He's so hurting that he uh, acts, you know, against Samantha, who is, show, who is showing so much uh, love and so much, but but yet she persists until she finally makes him realize that she's the one who's really going to be good for him. I, I love that. I love that that uh, finally when he acknowledged that uh, I want to live with you and, and doesn't remember his father anymore. Yes, I, I thought it was a great a great movie. Yes, the, 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 the producers, they, they, they're, they're, they did a, an amazing job. Yes. Mm -hmm. Thank, Thank you, you, Dora. Thank you. Uh, Susan Hurst. Wait a minute. I got to unmute. Okay. We hear you. We hear you. Yes. <laughs> um, I love the film too. I like the simple films like this with not a lot of bells and whistles, really, just real simple 
and natural. I love that technique and I love the film. But the part that I really, really got me was when the little boy was standing in the shack with that baseball bat getting ready to hit the man. He looked so tiny and vulnerable in that scene to me, trying to do a man's job there. It was really, really tender scene for me. That's that's terrific. I like the way you explained it. Uh, you know, his vulnerability, you know, his fear uh, at that moment. And yet, you know, he 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 just does it, uh, you know, and, and then, you know, later on, you know, he's he's not unstoppable because he goes to his father with the money. He wants to buy his love back uh, and it doesn't work. You know, it's that's, you know, he really is coming to the realization uh, at that point. You know, he's he's now desperate and and the father just doesn't want the money. Uh, and then, you know, and, and he does he does fess up uh, when it comes time for the apology. Uh, you know, it's it's each. But, you know, at each moment, it's so natural. It's as if he's acting in that moment. He, it's his act as if he hadn't prepared, you know, it's so natural, the performances, yet they rehearse with these actors for months on end to get to this point. Mm -hmm. uh, there is a, a uh, technique that certain directors do. It's repetition. It's this constant repetition until they finally just become that character. And this is, you know, part of their work, part of their work. But uh, thank you for recognizing that. Uh, <laughs> Rachel. I also like the movie. And, you know, initially I'm going, well, where's the mother? And what's going on with the, you know, like, uh, and why would Samantha do this? And all this other backstories that I'm used to hearing. And I realized I don't need that. I'm in the present of the movie. And I remember initially when I saw him doing, you know, running around and with the bicycle and everything else. I just wanted to grab this kid and just say, stay in one place, <laughs> you know? And it was just like, I looked at the bicycle less of freedom as I got to run from everywhere. And, you know, he's trying to find his place and he feels by having the wheels, he can go somewhere else, be somewhere else do something else, you know, I don't like here. So I have to go somewhere else, you know, and then he realizes that he doesn't have to have the bike. And what was very, in a way, kind of symbolic and strange what to me was uh, he never learned. It's so many times the bike he left outside and it gets stolen. After one time, you would think that you would tie it up, but that was the thing. He did not want to be tied up. It was like symbolic of like even tying up the um, bicycle that, you know, he, he never did it. He never wanted to do it. And I also thought it was interesting with Samantha that um, there were a couple of scenes, especially with her, but especially when she got bit in the arm by the boy, and here she is with the phone and she is debating, where do I go from here? What do I do? And I could feel her like emotions, you know? And, I, you know, while this was a simple movie, it still had the actors and I believed every one of the characters. And I, I'm glad that she was a no nonsense person when the father was like, you know, I tell my son that I, he is not supposed to come back. And she goes, oh, no, no, no. You tell your son, no. this is your son, you do it. And, you know, and I was so glad that she did this in the movie because if she did not force the father to say that, this kid would always go back to the father. He would always think there's still hope. There's still hope, you know? And still, even when the father told him there's no hope, he still went back, you know? So, but I was just, you know, and it was a little ironic at the end of the movie that, the, um, that this kid beat him up and was gonna leave him for dead, you know? And it's the role reversal is just like, now I have a place to go. 
and I want to go home. I don't care if I'm feeling well or whatever. If I have a concussion, I know I have and I want to go there. I have a barbecue that I'm having with my uh, potential friend. So I thought it was a very good movie choice. So thank you. Terrific. A pleasure. Thank you. Thank you for all your comments. Uh, who, who else? Arlette, is that your hand? You got to unmute. Can you hear me? Yes. We all know that even abused children always want their parents. That's a known fact. But somewhere in the movie, the father didn't mention, like, did the grandma die? Yes. I thought I heard something yes. that the grandma yes. died. Before yes. she died, things were copacetic. The father must have really showed that boy some love, really, and, and the way of life. Because when she died and everything fell apart, uh, I'm sure that Cyril just could not imagine, like you said, he sold my bike. But it's a known fact that he will always love his father. Even though he got rejected, it's no. just a known fact that children do that. Well, it, it, it is. There's a you picture know, of us. It's it's apparent. And, and uh, also, we don't know, you know, it's again, we don't know the circumstances. We don't know what her father, what his father did. You know, what what was, and this is a, a small, as I said, post-industrial town. It's basically, basically a depressed town. Uh, it was one of those industrial cities uh, after the war, and then it fell apart uh, in, the, in the 90s when, when everybody went offshore. Uh, so we don't know you know, really, this, this, there's no skyscrapers. This is not a big city. It's, it's a small, it, it is a small city. And it's, uh, you know, it's I very low middle class speak. for the I most do? part. Uh, so we, we can only surmise yeah. what these people's backgrounds are. And we know, you know, he's working, he's working as a short order cook, basically, in this restaurant. Uh, mm -hmm. And uh, worried about his job you know, more than he's worried about his son, uh, which is which is certainly telling. Uh, so I don't know. We don't know where that's, where, you know, we're going to hope that he, he just winds up staying with Samantha. That's all I can hope for. Uh, anyway, Ron? So initially, after, after watching the film, we felt like it had gone real fast and then just ended without, all right, what's, What's the ongoing conclusion? Where is this going afterwards? But it's obvious, you know, you finally realize this is the woman to live with. And then I'm thinking, this is almost like an Oliver Twist-esque uh, relationship. You know, the kid comes out, he's on the streets, uh, the bad guys come after him, but then he, he finds some warm place to go live with, which is, you know, his resolution. But it it all happens in such a short time frame. Yeah, it it it's it it does. I like the Oliver Twist, you know, because that is the pattern. But uh, it is a short time frame. It's but we're seeing people being human. You know, this is a it, it's it's a microcosm uh, of watching people be of watching human behavior uh, and and how people make choices. And this is the story of a little boy who, you know, his, his bike is missing. Uh, did his father, his father sold it. He doesn't want to believe it. Uh, he winds up being taken in uh, it by a, a person who wants to give him trust. And yet he gets seduced. You know, it's, it, it is an allegory. It is a fable in a way. It is a modern fable uh, and interestingly told interestingly told but it, it's all happening in the moment that's that's the beautiful thing about it these guys are like the antidote to what's going on in film today uh or they are the anti uh you know of of everything else that's going on in film you know they leave out backstory they're very minimal in their approach uh there's not a lot of decoration it's mostly on the character so they they really have carved out something in their filmmaking, and they are consistent. If you look at any one of those titles, you will see that consistency. But you'll see a different story each time. 
you'll see a different story each time. Uh, Mickey, you got to unmute, Mickey. There you go. Okay. Um, the uh, drug dealer was obviously a bad guy, for sure. But Cheryl, he, Cyril seemed to be drawn to him almost like he was searching for another father figure. Yeah. You know, he, he reeled him in. He gave him a nickname. He let him come. He came to his house. He did all kinds of things to reel him in. And the kid was drawn to him, almost like he was searching for a father figure to replace the father that he knew he couldn't have. Well, yes. I mean, there is definitely that, that, that element to it. And it's also the fact that, you know, Wes is not too old. It's also like a brother. It's like a big brother, but it's, it's almost like he's being drawn into a cult. You know, this is the way it's the pattern, the way Wes does it. You can tell he did this with, you know, he says, I've never let anybody else here before. Well, who's he playing games with? If he never let anybody there before, he's got the game. So obviously other people have been there. Uh, but yes, he's he's drawing him in, he's seducing him, if you will. Uh, and and he's he's fragile. He is vulnerable. He is uh, you know, in that place where it would be easy to seduce him. Uh, and that's exactly what happens. He sees that figure in him. You're right. So uh yes, yes. Okay, who's next? Who's next? Jackie, you're quiet tonight. <laughs> <laughs> well this is a tough one for us because we're really not kid fans and so uh, it, it took us the entire movie to even consider liking this kid <laughs> but but we felt sorry for him through the whole thing the one thing that that i did think through this is that when you look at everyone involved every single person failed him and even up to a point samantha did too because she seemed to feel like if she took him into her fold, everything would be okay. And it wasn't. That was a young man who desperately needed some sort of counseling. And even at the home, they didn't realize that. And so every single person in his life failed him, including at, at the end. So you, you hope as he pedals away and he goes to the house that he does have a future. But it, it was hard because I got to be honest with you, through most of it, Larry and I are going, somebody needs to jerk a knot in that little guy's butt. So, you know, <laughs> <laughs> well, well, I wouldn't go that far, but it, it it's it is the fact that you know. And that's why we didn't make a comment because you wouldn't go that far, but we did. <laughs> yeah, okay, but but what I no, what I was going to say is you're you're right about you know this is a world lacking in social services, uh, and I think that's part of what you know. Sometimes you have to look at what's missing. What you're pointing at is something that's missing. OK, and we have to ask ourselves, well, why why did they not have anybody from social services here? Obviously, she had to go and ask for permission to take him in. That's a social service. But as far as counseling is concerned, no, we didn't see that. Uh, and we can't presume he was going to counseling because of the way he was behaving. So so I think that's important to understand is there they're purposely leaving this out. You know, this is missing from the story because the system has failed. If the system has failed, chances are everybody else is going to fail. Uh, you know, but yet, even, even though Samantha failed at moments, she was trying and she couldn't, you know, she did feel like she was failing. Uh, and she, but she, she stayed in there. She didn't give up. I mean, there's that wonderful cinematic scene when they're riding on the bicycles together. Interesting, they're both riding bicycles together. And there's a bridge in the background. And, you know, you don't compose a scene unless you, you there's an intent. And they are, at that moment in the film, all crossing a bridge. Uh, they, you know, they're crossing, they're crossing a metaphorical bridge because at that moment they sit down, they're in the grass, they're having the sandwich. She said, how about a barbecue? You know, let's call up, let's call up so-and-so, the other boy. And he does and makes arrangements. It's a beginning. This is another step. 
you know, I haven't failed. I haven't failed completely. You know, she's making, you know, it takes steps. It takes steps. And I think that's what they're showing in the film. And I thought it was very interesting how they structured that. And you, you, you know, you did see, you did have something to say. It's not about, no, no, I disregard the other part, but I take, I certainly take the fact that you're saying, where are these services? They don't exist. And they don't exist, you know, we have a hard time with them in our own society. We have to remember we're dealing with all of the culture here as well. We always have to be mindful of this place. And it is basically a socialistic uh, uh, area, the, the government, you know, in Belgium. And they're lacking yet in those social services. So thank you for bringing I, that I up. I did want to say something but, to what Jackie said. Uh, I um is that there was a, a, a one scene where they said that the counselor, uh, that there was a psychologist uh, that he went to see through the home that he was staying in. Yeah. And also another thing about counseling, it's what a person wants to receive from counseling. If you have a rebellious kid that doesn't want to listen to a counselor or something, they're not going to learn from it. They're not going to be helped by it. They have to want it. So there's also that. Yeah, well, he also had a one-track mind. I mean, he just, I'm going to get my father back. I'm going to get my bike back. That's, you got to remember, he's, he's a young kid. He's a small kid. Uh, you know, he's an eleven-year-old kid, uh, and and that's the way they behave. I want, I get. You know, he's still basically an id. Uh, you know, his ego is not developed at all. If we mm -hmm. want to get psychological, you know, and that's part of his self-worth. I'm sorry, Susan. Go ahead. Um, I just wanted to say one thing that struck me, everybody is saying basically what I said, he was riding the bike in the beginning, he was a very lost soul. He did have a mission, but he was really a lost soul. And what really yeah. bothered me at the end when the, they had that fight in the woods, the boy, and uh, they had this throwing the stones and, and then he fell out of a tree and then the father comes and the father says, well, if he's dead, we're going to say that it was a, you know, an accident or whatever it was, we had nothing to do with it. And that really bothered me. You know, it was like no responsibility for it. And it was just really mm -hmm. bothered me that, that little scene where he, you know, he was going to call the ambulance, but then he said, well, I don't want you to get in trouble. And right. Yeah. I, I'm going to protect my son, but that's see, right. That's a father protecting his son. You know, it's, we may look at, it's being but, human. Okay. It's it, being human. But yet, yeah, and I understand. I was the listen. I wanted to knock those two guys on their head. But it, it is being human. It's understandable that he wants to protect his son, but he's also an idiot at the same time. Uh, yeah. You know. So so yes, I I that that should bother you. It's uh, a bother. You me. know. And and I thought um, basically this is my second time seeing the movie as I told Linda before, and I got a little more out of it the second time. The first time I think I got lost. But I thought that he was, uh, the young boy was a very good actor and he really, his emotions were really portrayed at, at this loss of his father and searching for, he didn't know what. And then when he found it, he didn't have it. He's a child and yes. uh, that's what happened. So, so this Wes gave him some security of some sort, even though it was the wrong quote, wrong type. And this woman was really basically it all started when he grabbed her in the doctor's office. And then she says, you can hold on to me, but not so tight, just like you said. And then you knew this was a very compassionate, sensitive person because somebody would have just gone, get off me, you know? So there was a lot to this movie, a lot more than, than I thought to this movie, even though it was you a realistic movie. Well, you got you may, may remember Shelley's Law. You know, the first time you, you watch him movie the second time you see it so you you adhere to the law <laughs> thank you susan terrific uh anybody else anybody else? yes linda yeah well i would agree with jackie that misbehaving children are hard to watch but i would take it one step further misbehaving parents are harder to watch 
in my opinion. <laughs> and so I really had a much harder time with, with that. And I also uh, would take a little exception to the fact that uh, that I know it was mentioned that that he probably had a happy home in the beginning, and that's why he had such a home uh, a bond. I don't believe that because I don't think that a father just turns on a dime there that he was loving and kind and and all, and he just decided that he doesn't want his son anymore. He won't even tell him, you know. So I think that it was the grandmother that had provided the thing, and the child was probably always desperately trying to win his father's love. Was the way I took it. And then I had several uh, little things that I that were very small scenes in the movie that I thought just showed a little glimmer that he was like maybe other children that he could drop that um, that that hard shell that he had developed over a long time. I believe I don't think that was sudden uh, was the fact that when the other children says we have room for one more in the game, you want to play? Yes. And his whole face lit up. He says I'll be right back. But then the stealing of the bike again. Uh, you know, did, you know, took that away. And then we had the scene when he was so happily looking forward to the barbecue and he's going to go in by himself and get the charcoal and he's, he's all excited. And then of course that went south too, but we had those few little glimmers that he was just a little boy. Absolutely. And yeah. not only so that, that I'm, glad, way. I'm glad you pointed up those scenes because it, it showed contrast in the film that there were those kids uh, you know, that were Wes's kids, so to speak, that mm -hmm. he was using, that he uses them to bring Cyril in, uh, to reel him in. And then there are those kids that are kids. You know, mm -hmm. they're playing soccer. They're not like Wes's kids. So we have a contrast. I mean, they, they really try to balance the world. You know, it's not all one way. But I mm -hmm. love your comment. Of course, yes, it is. it is harder to watch uh, parents misbehaving parents or, or parents who are lacking because they should know better but the kids don't know better right and, and he just he didn't even feel guilty you know he, he yeah. just was showing no remorse whatsoever it's just I don't I can't do it uh, yeah that's it you know yeah, and I that's the difference. That, that, yeah. that much more objectionable you know than than, than the child yeah. although he was tough I wouldn't want to have to take him on <laughs> so <laughs> 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 oh, terrific. Yeah. Terrific. Anybody else? Anybody else have anything else they'd like to add or talk about? Well, okay. This is nice. As I expect, this is a terrific discussion. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, and as I said, you can get more into the Dardan planet uh, with their other films. Uh, it's not it's not always kids in peril that you want to knock over the head. Jackie, some of them are adults. <laughs> anyway, uh, so our next film uh, is in October. It's October 11th. We we changed the theme now. Uh, we've gone we've gone from young people. We go now. We go to uh, through a lens darkly. Uh, we are sort of in the noirish world uh, and or a world of suspense. Uh, where betrayal or revenge, passion, parts of darkness, uh, people trying to survive, especially in our next film, Balloon. Balloon, it is a film from Germany. Uh, it takes place, it's a recent film from 2018. Uh, in 1979, it takes place in East Germany after initially failing to flee from the east to the west uh, in a hot air balloon. Two families struggle to make a second attempt while the East German State Police are closing in. So it's a very tense film. It's uh, Watch the editing. It's terrific. It's well acted. Uh, and uh, it's, an exciting, it's an exciting escape film. Uh, and it's based, it actually is based on a true story, uh, which we'll discuss when I see you next. So thank you all. Well, uh, I hope you enjoyed Shelley. the evening. Yes. Thank you, Shelly. On, on behalf of the friends, we always thank you again for a very interesting discussion and one where we learn a lot from each other and from you, of course. And is it uh, two weeks? what What's is it two, two weeks away when we're yeah. going to have? Yeah, two weeks from today. What is the name? Balloon? Balloon. 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 Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's a bit, well, obviously, it's available on, on Canopy. Uh, and uh, I think you can watch it also on Amazon. 
You can get it if you don't have canopy, but I think most all of you have canopy. Uh, so you should be able to find it. Also, as I always recommend, go to justwatch.com and it'll tell you where it is. Uh, I'm sorry, Susan. No, I just, uh, I, this is my first time co-hosting. So I, I really, I apologize if, uh, if I didn't record right away and I didn't do anything because I didn't think I was doing it. I thought Joyce was still doing it. So I'm in training. Just remember that girls, I'm in training. Yeah. So thank you so much for coming and supporting the friends. And um, as Shelly said in the beginning, you don't have to be Jewish to say to anybody, have a sweet, healthy, happy, peaceful new year. And that's right. what we wish for everybody. Mm -hmm. thank, thank you, Susan. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, thank you. Everybody. We're gonna thank say you, Shelly. Good night, everyone. Have a pleasure. Good night, good night everyone. everyone. Good night. Shelly, Shelly, what's the um, what's the movie for the twenty fifth for October twenty fifth? October 25th is yeah. The Invisible Witness. Okay, it's thanks. called The Invisible yeah. Witness from Italy. Okay, great. Sorry. That's Thank a you. real film noir. Yeah.